Welcome to the Leith Noise Up Show <coughs> with the regular crew. We've got Nori Stewart, Phil Attridge, Alex Grant, and myself, Stuart Lockhead. There's no FMQs this week, so we'll be talking about a variety of issues, including Trident, the Edinburgh bed tax issue, Ian Davidson, Chair Tube, crematoriums, the new seven classes, and tax havens. Who wants to start? Oh, we'll get through all that. Yeah, well. Who wants to start? Well, I'll start it off gently, so I yes, it's, it's, it's this thing, it started off in the Morton Hall Cemetery, it came to light there a couple of years back, where um, people were still born babies, um, very young babies, and then they've been told, oh, sorry, there's no remains, but what they were doing was just dumping the remains, literally dumping the remains mm -hmm. into a grave. And, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's is there any, uh, any re why was it happening that way? Um, Bureaucratic insensitivity, I suppose it was too much problem well, to grind the used, Yeah, The culture used to be, I mean, as you know, my wife's worked with newborns all her days. And the thinking at one time was that if your child was born dead, the best thing for you was to have nothing to do with it. Okay. So basically the bear was swept away and uh, it went to an undertaker and they used to put the babies under the pillow in an adult coffin nothing to do with the baby's relations or whatever and it, it was just all swept under the gun. And then things moved on and now you have photographs and get to hold your baby and all that kind of thing. Much more sensitive. So this idea of the babies disappear no, well, the, in a crematorium like they get burnt to nothing is just nonsense. Well the formal law advocate, um, Elish, and Julina, she's yeah, leading yeah, an investigation yeah. into it. Right. I mean, the law is very, very clear. The law says, in clear terms, they must return ashes. Ashes means everything that's left in the chamber. It's that simple. Um, so it's actually these, these local authorities, not all the local authorities, some local authorities, South Ayrshire, Hawker, Highland South, uh, in all cases of babies being cremated, their ashes returned to their parents or scattered with the consent of the okay, parents. Okay, but can, can you... Why are you bringing it up? Is there somebody that's guilty? Oh yeah, well I mean, Ab Aberdeen. Aberdeen has basically admitted it does not return ashes to, to parents for children up to 18 months. That's the size of the amount of ashes. And what about... What the average person leaves... Yeah, but what about Edinburgh? That's where it first came to light. Yeah, well Edinburgh, they're still investigating that because um, that's where it actually basically started. Okay. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's all part of the same philosophy in the respect that for example, just this, this one wee anecdote is worth mentioning. My brother-in-law died of cancer, and when we did the crematorium bit, I said he asked he asked for some music to be played, mm. and they said, "Oh, we can't do that. The rules don't allow it." Yeah. So I went to the minister who was doing the the service, and he said, "He said, look, I can't. I, the rules don't allow it. I, you know, it's as simple as that. There was no logic." But he said, "If you bring a tape recorder in." shove it in front of me and press the button and nobody's going to stop you. But you're actually breaking the rules. So those, that is just... Yeah, that's, that's what I did with my mother's funeral. I brought in a tape recorder and, and the music I wanted to play. Yeah, see, but it's, te technically, what, I think now you can do it, but then they didn't allow it. So to me, all this is, well, we can't be bothered. We don't care about no. people's sensitivity. No, because it, it shows that some councils do care, yeah. some don't. Yeah. It's bureaucratic insensitive. Because, Correct. Sorry. People should walk. Okay. Well, I, I know you can't have just any headstone you want. Oh. And a friend of mine died and wanted a rugby ball as his headstone. Right. No, no, you can't have it. No. So she got the headstone made and we went in one night and stuck it up and nobody ever noticed since. There you go. <laughs> well, that, I think, my, okay, I think. Do it. Thanks for raising that, Phil. I'm not sure what, uh, can, we, what can be done about it. We're waiting for an official investigation. An investigation into Edinburgh and into Aberdeen right. uh, as well, but okay. I mean, th th they well, let's move on. Hey, well, let's move on. Yeah, okay. no, but we can um, hold people responsible. Exactly. Why you were making no, Nori, you wanted to bring up the the, the, the disagreement in Edinburgh, not yeah. to evict people. Um, it was online yesterday that the SNP and Labour parties in Edinburgh, which is an SNP Labour council, have agreed not to evict anybody. If they go into arrears do, on the bedroom tax. They'll do everything else to get the money for bedroom tax, but they won't evict anybody, which is not only sensible because the costs of eviction are massive mm -hmm. and would land on the council, not the UK government who's responsible for mm -hmm. the bedroom tax, 
but it just shows you that if you sit down mm. have a wee chat about it you don't have to score political points you can just do the right thing um, in the context that Duncan Hollisall had written a piece in his blog looking for the same thing but what Duncan appeared to want was everybody to agree to the Labour stance well, so they, they, they now come up with policy for the Scottish government, even though they didn't win the election. Yes, that appears to be, well, I mean, obviously they're Labour. But, you know, what Duncan would say, let's put party politics aside, um, except not really, and all you SNP guys agree with us and we can deal with this. Well, can I just stick a little more in there? Just be slightly oh, yes, presenting. stick a knife in if you like. No, 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 it's a Labour SNP administration in Edinburgh Council. Twenty to eighteen, you say the SNP label. Oh, I'm terrible. Yeah, bias, Kim. Oh, I've just been a sorry. slightly pedantic apparatchik. So, <laughs> what is what is your what is your mate? Is because he's now a member of the SNP, although he was a Labour Party member. Does he not even up the? Does that not become one of each? Is there somebody? Is somebody? Why? Is somebody jumped ship or something? Well, Cardani jumped ship. Oh yeah. That oh, that's years ago. Years ago. Yeah. But I think this debate is it is actually all about whether there is any any truthful attempt to protect the innocent, as it were. I mean, because if you notice in that debate between um, uh, between Stuart Camp Campbell on wings and Duncan Hollisall, uh, the bird jumped in and mm. started tweeting and she got she got it severely in the neck because it looked Kate as though, Yeah. It looked as though she was actually and I'm not I'm not sure about this myself. My instant reaction was similar to a lot of the people who were looking at it because looking at it, because Stuart Campbell was giving Duncan Hollisall a down over it and saying that he was just playing party politics. Well, she, she actually wrote an article way back at the start about what she actually thought should happen with the bedroom tax and what the Scottish government could do. So th there is an interesting debate here about forget, if you did actually forget party politics, what is the best thing that we could collectively do to protect these poor boroughs? I'm not sure um, every, anybody is very certain. What the, well, problem, the problem for the Scottish government is if they start putting money into this... And they've got to pay for it somehow. Someone else has right, to give. Right, but if they start doing that, every single policy that comes north of the border... Yeah, exactly. No, I agree. No, no, I, I, so I agree. Well, can I... Can can I, 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 I'd say I'm, I'm just a personal experience. I, I know somebody who's just... Uh, she's just in bits realising what's happening with the, the bedroom tax. And... Uh, um, the situation is, as of Monday or whenever the first was, um, she's already, oh, she's already in arrears because right. she she's in a two bedroom house. They rent about one bedroom house to move her to, and until she gets a one bedroom house, she'll be running up arrears. Is it a council or a housing, housing association oh. she's in? Um, it's a more tricky situation. If so, you're in. so if she's already fifty quid. She's already owe 50 quid for this month because right. you pay your rent ahead of month ahead yeah. because that's how much she's yeah. going to have to pay every month. And she's on JSA. Peanuts. Mm. And no, uh, no, no. I'm sorry, she won't be the only one. Oh, no. And there's also the simple fact as well with the government picking that up and, well, if they go into arrears, I mean, who's going to sit there and work out are they in arrears? Because you're going to get your money in, in one lump and you have to pay your rent. Now, is it this people because they're on a bed tax? Or are they putting themselves in arrears because they haven't yeah. paid this? And also the simple fact that the housing, but the housing account has to be self-financing. So when the council starts losing money, and if it doesn't, you know, the rent is then going to go on to the 35, 40 percent of people that aren't getting any housing benefit at all that are out working and paying their full rent. They'll have to put the rents up. Yeah. But that, I mean, the really nasty thing about this, quite apart from the personal level, the political nasty thing about it is, regardless of what happens, none of these costs are going to land on the UK government. No. They're going to no. land on councils. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the UK government will be coining in the 14, 25%, whatever it is, to their exchequer because it's welfare and that money is the UK government's. Yeah. So it's a win-win for them. And they, they don't have to give a shit. Basically, they well, they don't. That's the whole point. They don't. They don't. And the, but the trouble, but surely, one, the one thing I'd like to know the answer to is, if, if the end game of all of this is a whole bunch of people end up being evicted, the council's then obliged to 
pick them up and do something with them, shove them it's in a body bed and breakfast. Yeah. Even eight, eight hundred a week or something. It's a, it's a cost on the council. Yeah, not, not on the government. Not on the so government. the government saves its welfare bill and forces it back into the council yeah. to deal with it. There's no doubt about that. But what amazes me is, aren't there enough councils in the whole of the so-called United Kingdom who could collectively get together and say, up with this, we will not put up. So stuff it, you know? And find it. Find they, have, they have legal responsibilities. Yeah, legally they get down, down very much. They could. Yeah, they have to be. Well, I mean, well okay, can I, can I, can I just yeah. raise an, an issue that was drawn to my attention a couple of days ago too? This is, the bedroom tax is, is kind of a peaking and it's, it's just come in this week. But there's a whole raft, of course, of, of changes to the welfare environment, yeah. including over the last two or three years, um, Atos, the private company, Moving, p telling people that they've got, um, they're fit for work, even though they're dead, paralysed, whatever. And apparently, uh, 13,000 people have, have died mm. within a short period of time of being reclassified as fit for work, What's even though they weren't. I didn't know that. Well, it's amazing. so why is that a problem? Oh, you're not a Tory. <laughs> All right, well, it's not a problem if you're a Tory, is it? No. Because then you don't have a welfare bill to pay for 13,000 people. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, that's a, true. As, as well, the thing that comes through this, with and, and there was one of their ministers, this female, going, isn't it good? Now we have a fair welfare, everybody, and this is rewarding people. And you're looking, you know, and you want to, you want to put her in a canvas cardigan and throw her somewhere, you know, forever. Well, but the whole point yeah. is when you look at it, and most people, they really, don't care if people die, if people are on the street, if people go hungry, if children's lives are completely blighted forever. They don't care. Welfare is not about being fair. And it's welfare is about giving to people that need and to keep them alive. It used, to be, it used to be called a safety net through you, which you didn't fall. But of course, the voice in the black stuff is demonstrated very, very clearly. You know. You also yeah. use wading through the pond, um, how you can fall through that. But bear in mind, there's another aspect to this. When it comes to pensions, you know, when I started work in 1963 or something, you paid national insurance, superannuation into a pension fund. Your national insurance was your... You, I started paying national insurance at the age of 17, which was to pay for my pension when I retired. But Thatcher stole that. Uh, well. And privatised pensions. Yeah. That, I mean, it, the whole, we're here because, in this position, with welfare, because various governments ignored it, yeah. essentially. Well, they didn't, they didn't it's invest. the most complicated system in the world. I mean, we know people who, you know, they get work on a building site or demolition site or whatever. They know it's going to be six weeks. The first thing they do is they go, right, wait a minute, I lose my benefit if I go work for six weeks. When I come back onto the system because I can't get any more work after that six weeks, I'm not going to get rent for ten weeks. Mm. My landlord's going to be screaming and shouting mm. because there is no way to simplify the system. Oh, and they turn around and they go, right, you go get six weeks work, son. When you come back, we'll give you exactly the same thing you had before you went to work. I thought they had sorted that. Well, as far as I know, no. well, I uh, they, but they, haven't, they haven't even sorted this. The, the basic thesis, still a ten week wait for rent. The, uh, the basic yeah. thesis they're supposed to be working on is about well, you can't possibly, uh, if the average wage is twenty grand, you can't possibly be giving people twenty five grand who aren't working because that's unfair. Now that's very easy. The population will generally take that box and say I agree with that. But if that's what they, if that was true, and therefore there was no incentive to take a job. Then the government could quite easily say, well, I'll tell you what, you're getting 25 grand at the minute. If you take this job at 20 grand, we'll keep giving you the five grand so you're no worse off. And then at least yeah, you're but Alex, the but they the won't even do that. The, 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 these these yeah, huge, tax yeah, but these, these yeah. huge sounding you know, sums of money, are we getting 25 grand a year? The, the, the vast majority of that is rent, and that rent is going to private landlords. Oh, exactly. Well, so and, 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 and that's not inseparable from the housing bubble for the last 30 mm. years. No, it's not. And rent controls is easily sold. It would easily sold a lot of that. Rent no, I know. And what, and what has Gideon just done? He's come up with a, a pile of money to encourage people to go and buy more second homes so they can rent them out at very high rents. Because oh no, you, they're not. They're, they're not buying for rent. It's 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 for you know the weekend. Right. But that I mean, Stuart's, Stuart's point was probably the most mm. important yeah. point that's come up at the table because 
we're not subsidizing poor people. We're no. subsidizing landlords. Yeah, yes. But yeah. we're also going to subsidize when, when we're talking about and this. Trying to push so, I mean, so, so when you get this quote of £26,000 a year cap, it sounds as though the, the, the tenants and the poor are getting that money. No, they're not. No, no. So but that's all. Landlords get most yeah. of that money. And a lot of that, I mean, this whole thing really came about and, and, and you know, got moving because of four central London boroughs, yeah, yeah. which is where you would be, you would need that amount of money, and you couldn't rent if your cap is on 25, if you 26. Keep, if you keep That's subsidizing, if you keep subsidizing uh, housing at London prices, yeah. you just inflate the London bubble yeah, even worse. Inflate the bubble, but they're going to make it worse as well because they're actually now looking, and I know it's slightly different, but it's it's it's, it's all joined up. Is they're looking at reforming the minimum wage, basically? Oh, yes. Doing uh, away with it. Of course. So they're not to work. Look, there's absolutely no hundred hours a week. The, Tory, the Tories want to drive this down to basically Victorian levels. The easiest way to make people comply, they've got rid of the unions, right? Unions are weak. They've got rid of the unions, which has got rid of the Labour Party. Well, the Labour Party yeah, really got rid of the unions because they could have well, given them more power. What, what, what I mean by more that right. is the unions are no longer putting working men, women, <clears throat> into position to go to Parliament because they're not strong enough to produce those kind of people. Very few now. It's all Oxbridge. It's all middle class at the top of the Labour Party. Yeah. So that fight has well, been lost. Maybe we should maybe we should move on to class though because it's well connected. To that is well class. Right, okay. yeah, all right. Well, let's let's okay, go there so because it, 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 we could talk. Of, we're, this is the issue: bedroom tax, welfare. Yeah. I mean, we could go on and on. Um, Alex, um, yeah. You, so you're, the, you're briefed so on this, 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 this new this new sexy thing. bit of research, which in, ostensibly endeavours to deal with the British class system, which classically. Uh, I mean, I was in marketing, it was even more complicated than this, but classically it's upper class, middle class, lower class, just like the two Ronnies and, and whatever you used to do. John and, Cleese. John Cleese. And now they're, now they're attempting to refine it, which is a laudable enough objective, and they come up with s seven categories, elite, established middle class, technical middle class, new affluent workers, traditional working class, emergent service workers, and a precariat, wonderful word, or precarious proletariat. But as uh, my friend Phil uh, pointed out this morning, there's a very good cartoon in The Guardian which redefines these, I think, in a much more illustrative fashion. Which, and uh, accurate. Accurate. It goes as top, top to bottom. Our wise and beautiful masters, decent middle England, interesting comment in itself, tells us everything in this Scottish context, striving if frankly oikish. Is that the third one? That's the third one. Ten fourth fourth one, one, ever so slightly deserving scum. New affluent workers. Undeserving scum. Emergency service workers. Freak show scum. Traditional working class. Expendable. Lump and proletarian. Lump and proletarian. Yeah, well, and it's got precariat here. Now, this, this, and there's a nice article here in The Guardian basically saying that the, the, the traditional three British parties um, are, were pretty much structured in the upper, middle, lower. Uh, definition and it's it's bemoaning the fact that none of them apart from although it, do, it does say here the liberals seem to be the only ones who are doing a good job I question that Pardon? yeah exactly no, no let's not go down that road let's not go down that road just out of curiosity who's, who's the author uh, Martin Kettle oh yeah no, I um, wouldn't expect anything anyway so I think I think the I mean the the joke the cartoon is that it actually some sums the whole thing up the, in actual fact you don't need seven classes. What the Tories are trying to do is 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 re-identify the Victorian concept of the undeserving poor. Whether there, you know, there's there's several different types of undeserving scum here, one way or another. Uh, you know, they want to recreate the working class. There's no question about that. They actually want to simplify it back to what this piece of research is trying to suggest is, is more sophisticated. In actual fact, I think the Tories in one respect recognise that and say, oh, I've had enough of this bollocks, we'll get it back to where it should be. And by the way, you should, you, these people are undeserving, they should be treated like shit, really? so let's shovel it. Really, Alex, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it you know, up, to, up to date in the sense that the London riots, Yeah, that was an underclass rioting. Yeah. Um, I would say, I wouldn't be surprised if all these welfare cuts this year did spark a new yeah. set of riots this summer. Yeah, eminently possible. Because if they if if keep, 
crushed out <coughs> the underclass and they've got no future and you keep robbing them from by the government that they've got no disincentive. They'll riot. You need, yeah, but you need for it to succeed in any way. I'm not saying it'll succeed. You it'll need, be crushed again. It's not the, the underclass that needs to, to kick against it. No, it's always, uh, you need the middle uh, classes. Well, no, it's the working class. The working right, the class working. have to shut the country down. Yeah, that, it, it, need, it needs some cohesive action there. With that. So, but what will happen really is rather, I think, uh, when you're looking at riots, what you'll get is a large rise in uh, crime. Muggings, burglaries, take, and stuff like that. And who are likely to be the victims? Um, are the people, well, you know, because a lot, a, a lot <coughs> of what you would call the lumpen proletariat or as Karl Marx actually used to term himself social scum. Um, which are there which will prey on themselves. We've just looked at one yes. that's yeah. just well, tried to kill six of his own kids. I mean, there's no other term well, for someone like that than, um, well, yeah, I could think of something, really, yeah, far worse, you know, but I mean. But that, I mean, the case is that most crime is committed against. Against old the people that class. have nothing, yeah, the yeah. same class, yeah. yeah Except for elite crime, which is. Well, oh, that's not crime. You get you get night talking about that. Don't you, don't you get knighthood or, or a peerage? You know when you do a really, 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 really <laughs> well, look at big crime. Uh, here, that neatly takes us to possibly tax havens. If we're talking about elite crime, a thirty-one yeah. trillion dollars dashed right. mostly, it seems, in British Virgin Islands and places like that. The Cayman Islands, Gibraltar, uh, yeah. And the Guardian is a member of a group which includes American. Papers, um, New York Times, perhaps? who have been investigating yes, on the front all this. Page, yes. Washington um, Post, and there's two hundred, two million, two million leaked emails. Well, there's two hundred gigabytes of oh, information. Yeah. To put that two million text. That's it was two gigabytes of information. How many of the sounds? How many of the sounds leaked? Two, two gigabytes. That was. Yeah. Oh. Yes. So what they're going to do, they say, is out everybody, which could be very interesting. Who's actually got the records? Who, is that, which organisation? It's not WikiLeaks, is it? No, no, no. no, no this, not. this is some sort of investigative journalist group. All right. But the whole point is. It's not the what? Bureau of Internet Investigative Journalism, no, I think is it? It might be. Oh, yeah, the International Consortium of Investigative oh. Journalists. That's it. So if you have a look at it, and, and, and that amount of money, $31 trillion, dollars, and you look at the deficit, and I should imagine that most. Well, that is stashed from all around the world dictators and oligarchs, and, and I've no doubt plenty of people in this country in the States. I should imagine nobody really has a deficit. Did, no country has a deficit. Did, 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 the deficit's did, did, all been stashed by yeah, not paying taxes. Technically, I think that's probably These true. people are actually probably guilty. If you had a look at it, and people were being... What these people have done, I mean, I mean, they're worse than parasites. Uh, I mean, these people are traitors to their own country, they're traitors to the human race. Did you... Anybody yeah. see STV last night? The news? That's it. Scotland tonight or whatever. Oh, yeah. well, so there's there's some one. social, some, what was he, a psychologist or something on, who basically turned around and said, well, you know, talking about the class thing, that uh, it's a lot of crap because you're looking at the wrong thing in the wrong way. You just look at the elites, you look at the amount of money they've got, take a quarter of all the money they have, and that's your debt cleared. Yeah. You don't have to touch the welfare state, nothing. So you just stick a 25% tax on them. Windfall tax. Oh. No, that's no, no, so no. That's before you go looking at tax avoidance, you know, loopholes, and all that stuff. That sounds like a typical middle class psychologist. You take a minimum of 50%, an absolute minimum of 50% on the incredible. basis that it's theft. Um, that way you would start to narrow no, no, the equality no, 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 gap no, 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 and then, talking, then you would impose a huge tax about, on the, about money the last 50. In, Tax havens and stuff. We're talking about money in this identifiable cash, legal cash, yeah. and all you're doing is saying, "Look, guys, we're in a bit of trouble at the moment. Go and give us twenty-five percent of what you got lying in the bank, and we promise to pay you back." Just Sometime. like Cyprus, sometimes. Yeah, but the problem is that no, no one who would be in the position to actually put that case, i.e., government, is anything other than part of that elite in the yeah. first instance. So it'll never happen. You mean they wouldn't put the country? Before, their, Before selves. their own, I thought they were public. You mean they're lying to us, Alex? I thought they were public Could servants. Be. Well, take 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 a look at now. It, well, allegedly, this will. If you're talking about elites, 
and now we've just lost an elite, which we were talking about last week, the king across the water, the, 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 you know, the, the, the labor king that didn't get there. David who's, Miliband. Who's now off to America. Now he's dumped that job he had in that football team that had the Italian fascists. Sunderland. Oh yeah, I got Sunderland, right? Now, and he's left that because he couldn't be in the team because of a fascist. So he's now taking this job with the International Rescue, uh, whatever it is. Um, and see who's on the go. Yep. And have you seen one of the individuals that's on the board, as the board of directors? Oh, let me guess, Rumsfeld. No, no. This person is evil personified. He even got a Nobel Peace Prize, actually. Kissinger? Yep. Is he still alive? Yep. He must be propped up, everybody. Oh, Oops. sorry. I mean, the devil doesn't even want him. You know. <laughs> he wouldn't even die. <laughs> I mean, he's no chance of going upstairs. And the devil, no, sorry. I mean, they blocked the staircase down right. the next. Now, it's time to move on to our second last topic, because you're all, be, you're all dying to get tour into this one. It's Chair Tube Davidson. Oh dear, oh dear. This should get a few you things You mean the right. blackmailer, the, the man, blackmailer. The man. I mean, again, I've got to bring Duncan up here. Duncan also for trying to defend it. It's quite obvious if you watch the video. No, the right, let's, live. let's let, you know, the, not everybody, the, a video, the, sorry. Davidson claimed to have um, opposed the bedroom tax, turned up at the rally in Glasgow last Saturday to have his face saying, look, I'm opposing the bedroom tax. And then he was interviewed on camera and claimed that he'd... he'd oh, he was asked how he voted. He said he voted no. The, and then he said that he voted against the government. And then he was asked about the party and he said, oh, the party abstained. But I voted no. And then he got aggressive with the guy by saying, you're wrong. See, I told you, da da da, and ran away. Now, I've been told by somebody who was there that he ran away. Didn't walk away smartly. Nothing. He ran away. Sounds like a cowardly thug to me. And then hid on the periphery of everything. <laughs> so what was Duncan saying about it? Well, Duncan came up with the excuse that Davidson obviously thought this hadn't been a question about the bedroom tax. Although the rally was all about the bedroom tax. tax. It was about the workfare vote. Um, retrospective law change. Oh, yeah, well, that's appalling as well, isn't it? Um, which he had voted against. and uh, Well, he'd voted against and abstained by not being there for one of the second votes. But neither of the bedroom tax votes was he there. He wasn't so present. He wasn't present, so he had abstained. He then went on to concoct this bullshit. So when did the Labour Party change its name? To what? Labstention. Labstention. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the, you know, we're, we're all about the bedroom tax extension, but the, oh, that's like... the allowing retrospective law changes mm -hmm. sets a precedent. Oh, well, it's shocking. I mean, the, the, it looks like the Supreme small court, thing. The court threw out what, what the work there, but instead of, and instead of um, accepting that the, the, they were in the wrong, they retrospectively changed the law. Yeah. So what kind what, of dictatorship is this? What happens if they retrospectively change the law on minimum wage. Oh, well, they won't on anything. On retrospectively, what happens? That means everybody that hasn't been paying the minimum wage gets offered it. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the next big fight. Is the well, it's wage. a huge burden on on, on on the growth of new businesses by you, by straddling them with having to pay people six pound nineteen pence an hour. Bullshit. I mean, it's, it's it's appalling. I mean, they just can't do it. And as well, having to give them holiday pay and sick pay. Um, and all these kinds of luxuries. That's another, that's another one Isn't it? where I mean, God. all the taxpayer <laughs> is doing with the bedroom tax, the position that is, they're subsidising private landlords and social landlords to an extent. Um, so the taxpayer isn't subsidising the poor sods that have to pay that rent, it's the person that receives the rent. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same with the minimum wage and tax credits. If they paid a decent wage, the taxpayer wouldn't have to top it up. And I'm sorry, if market forces dictate that your business can't pay a decent wage, your business goes down. That's the market forces. Yeah, but what an effect of it, it is, is a state subsidy of industry. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's, all, that's what, you know, the government, successive governments, and particularly the Tory government, will tell you that's, we're not, that's not what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Business should stand on its own two feet. But what they've actually ended up doing is businesses have said, well, we're only going to give people jobs if the state subsidises them, and that's what it's got to. And that, and that is a that's that's an interesting dimension of welfare. If they actually take that out, 
a bit, they won't, they, they won't take out something that subsidizes their pals at the end of the day. And, and the whole argument comes back to the world is driven by property prices. You know, because it is, because they can't touch, pro because if they, the, the private landlords are their supporters, so they won't have a go at them, but if they did have a go at them, what they would tell you is the defense is, well, if we have a go at them, it will depress property prices, and that'll, that'll, that'll affect everybody. So everybody's, you know, people who don't have enough pension, whose money is in the no, equity in their house, will suddenly be but decreased. But it won't affect blood. everybody, it will only affect people with something. If you've got Correct. that shit, and property so owners make it value. Yeah, but that's, that's not the majority. The majority are now, t since Mrs. Thatcher, we moved from social housing to private housing. We had to, everybody wanted to own their own house, according to her. So there's more than 50% of the UK population well, own their so, own houses. Yeah, so, but I mean, I'm, I'm defending it, I'm just saying it's a fact. So what, what happens? Oh, God, yeah, I remember it happened recently, didn't it? The subprime market. Um, no, no, I agree, but they'll do everything to, to, to restart the property bubble because the consequences of not restarting the property bubble take you into what's the importance of the value of the property that people own. Now, people who don't own property couldn't give a monkeys, I accept that. The people who are, are, lots of them are voters, you know, let's face it, they're the ones who are more inclined to vote, they're the ones, there's decent, this, you know, we can back to this, there's only three classes that matter, our wise and beautiful masters. Decent Middle England, the rest of them are irrelevant because they don't give a monkeys about them. Okay, right, but, no, but, yeah. but, 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 can I just finish? Yeah, no, no, because no. I own my house, right? I have no mortgage or anything yeah, else. Um, and I don't care if it's worth 10 quid because it's just a home. Um, at the end, they, I'm not speculating on it. So, I mean, if somebody did something where my house was drastically reduced to 50% or whatever Phil, its value Phil, is. You're, if that's true, and I'm willing to believe you, you're a very unusual person, which I knew anyway. But, but actually, most, most people who own property see it as something they can either pass on to their kids or they'll need it for their retirement because they don't have enough money in their pension. I'll tell you now, lots of people have bought property as pension. Okay. But, right. yeah, but, okay, but, but, but passing, it, passing it on to kids, right? I agree. Now, the whole point is the property values drop, so you pass it on to your kids, and then maybe you want to buy something else. But everything else has dropped anyway. Properties, a home, I mean, this, this, these South Sea bubbles of, of, of houses, they should pop, and we should just take, take it on the chin until there's such time as it comes around. All right, Some then. things are just All right, then. But right now, the, the final topic that's on, on my list is Trident. And I'll throw in Korea, the situation in Korea as well, because I've discovered that some people that, are, that don't normally take notice of what's happening in the world are even noticing what's happening in Korea. In other words, are we going to get nuked? Who wants to, to kick off on Trident? The well, only way North Korea will ever nuke the UK is if they're aiming at America and miss. <laughs> that That's simple. Simple. And they can't. They haven't got the range anyway, and we have no no influence whatsoever in Korea. It's America and China, and if they're going to nuke anybody, they'll probably go for China. Well, I mean, don't think they can reach America. It's China that's no, supposed Japan to, that can solve the problem, yeah, because just, China is not interested in anything kicking up in Korea. Right. China, the Chinese look, they've just changed the government. They change the government every ten years in China. It's not quite a dictatorship. But it's, a, <laughs> it's run by the Communist Party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they have their own. They have their own elite, but they don't have this one, you know, this do, god person. I do, I do like the way they deal with their uh, lower echelons when they've got their hands in the till. Oh, and the upper Guilty. as well. Edof. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, but yeah, the upper yeah. echelons as well doesn't matter. Okay, really. but, anyway, but the point, yeah. my, my point about China is, it's not in China's interest for this to get any worse. The, the country's doing very well. Chinese might lose the They've got a new, they've got a burgeoning <laughs> middle class. It's in, they're just not in their interest, as far as we know. It's not in anybody's interest. Look, you know, the, the $64,000 question here is, are the great British public, whether they're expendable or, well, we know the wise and beautiful masters thing, are they actually going to be impressed by Cameron standing here in Scotland telling us that because of the threat of North Korea, that's a perfectly good reason for continuing to spend a hundred billion pounds on replacement and tr replacing Trident, when, as we've discussed, five minutes ago, we're putting people out on the street because we can't afford the, the welfare system. I, I, I don't know what the British people think on this, and I've said this to umpteen people in the last couple of weeks, I've said it to some English friends of mine, I, ca I can't believe that they're actually able to look somebody in the eye and let them tell them, we're putting people out on the street because of extra bedrooms, but we're going to spend a hundred billion pounds replacing Trident. Okay then, Phil. That's half the problem. The amount of people out there that don't think 
They'll read in the paper, we need nuclear weapons because the Koreans will all be, remember 1950, the Koreans will be coming over in floods. And they'll all go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, oh, yeah, did Cameron actually get, get aboard a submarine? Is he photographed this morning on a submarine? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. A guy, a guy, Thatcher in a tank. Uh, I haven't seen any news. Something George Robertson on a nuclear sub. Something sailor on Twitter. Um, submarines are called boats, apparently, in Navy Park. Yeah, they are, yeah. He'd been on subs for 10 boat. years. And he said all they, ever, all they ever got when they came home was spat on by the local population. <laughs> well, in fast lane. Was that right? Because yeah. the big thing he's going to do now is frighten the sailor. He's going to frighten the locals by saying, and this is what something that has to be addressed. You know, if we take if we take the nuclear subs away from Scotland, Scotland's going to be derelict. There's going to be millions of people out of work. Bloody, we know we know that. Bloody derelict, and it's an accident. Well, yeah, I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. So they, they kind of keep many anywhere near an English. City. Actually, if North Korea is going to fire a nuke at us, we should move them immediately to the Thames. Yeah. That way we'll get an extra couple of minutes warm. The Thames the Estuary is totally perfect for them. It's a better target. Yeah. Thames yeah. Estuary is a perfect Much better point. place to put them. Well, it gives us maybe probably 20, 25 right, seconds okay. to go. Let's, 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 let's remind you that head the tree in your legs and kiss <laughs> your ass goodbye. Black goes full of the expendable, by the way. You oh, right. remember, that's let, why the nuclear... Let, let's remind the, the listeners and viewers that uh, if you want to protest against uh, the... Trident and Fuzz Lane, it's not this weekend, but next weekend. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not it's sure. around 10 o'clock or so, I've got it. It's around well, there's, three, there's three different dates. There's a, there's a rally in Glasgow on the yeah. Saturday. I can't remember what the Sunday is, and it's the Fuzz Lane blockade or whatever yeah. on mm -hmm. the Monday. So mm -hmm. there's three different opportunities. Okay. So you've got three opportunities next weekend to go and protest if you, you want. We want to have to get a train at about half past eight. Yeah. Go and look at the monkeys of defence as they all wander about with their uh, machine guns. You can get a train all the way to Helens. The M O D. You can get a train all the way to Helens, but if from Edinburgh. Uh, yeah, you can. That's true. It's a wee bit slow train, but you can get it all the way. Yeah, and, you get, so. and it's a nice little cutesy side town, so you can have a sit in the beach. It's very it? nice in Helens. Right. Well, agenda, but has anybody got one last final rant for the public to... Uh, here on yeah, one, one final one that's actually in this this joke I referred to earlier, but class in in the gutter in this uh, in this joke there is a copy of the Daily Hate, which we know who, what that means. Daily Mail, Daily, Daily, Daily Sun. And the headline Daily is "Shirking Scranger Culls Chav Brats." <laughs> that tells you everything about the wonderful Daily Mail, doesn't it? I mean, that that I, they they effectively said that. And but it also tells you an awful lot about the mentality of. British people, oh, yeah. which to my mind is yeah, one of the it is one of the main things. I mean, forget Scotland's great. Just get the hell away from this toxic entity south of the border. Time you for know. independence. Here, here. Right then, gentlemen. Thank you very much. It's been a t totally entertaining show today, and thank you for listening or viewing.